You too! Welcome back to another video. Solstice of Heroes 2022 is here, and so you need to make like Paul Tassie and touch some grass! Now with Solstice 2022, they have made some pretty significant changes to how you actually level your Solstice armor and get different roles and all of that stuff. And it is the single best high stat armor farm that I have ever seen. So real quick, we're gonna give you a breakdown of how all of the different components work because I have had several questions in stream while I'm live asking how it all works this year because it, it can be a little confusing at first, I'm not gonna lie. Speaking of which, I do stream every Tuesday at Reset. I do stream every Wednesday night and Friday and or Saturday night we do community help stream. So make sure you subscribe to the channel because I do that live streaming right here on YouTube. So first things first, you do have to come visit Eva in the tower and get your new armor set. Now, once you have it, please understand that you do have to be wearing one piece of that armor. I would recommend your class item so you don't completely destroy your builds in order to get the currencies that you're gonna need. So for this year's Solstice event, there are three currencies that you need to know what they do. The first one is Silver Leaves. Now this you get from doing basically anything in game that you normally do. As of recording this video, there are a couple different things that are bugged, but hopefully by the time, you know, the next day or two rolls around, those will be patched, so we're not gonna really worry about those. But you get Silver Leaves essentially from doing anything. So playlist activities, patrols, public events, dungeons, raids, whatever, anything that you can really imagine gives you Silver Leaves while wearing a piece of candescent armor, of course. Now, the whole point of Solstice is to take these silver leaves, go into the bonfire event, bonfire bash, and turn those leaves into ash. But we're gonna talk about ash in just a second. The next currency is kindling. Now, kindling actually comes directly from Solstice challenges. These Solstice challenges are character specific, meaning that you do have to complete all 24 on all the characters that you play in order to fully unlock the armor. These challenges range anything from just doing the bonfire bash activity to defeating specific taken bosses within that activity to defeating targets collecting silver ash completing crucible matches killing guardians in the crucible etc etc there's a lot of different ways that you have to play in order to get the entire 24 kindling that you need to fully upgrade one of your armor sets so let's talk about how that kindling works on each individual piece of armor so what you have to do in order to fully upgrade your candescent armor per slot is have six kindling so six kindling gets you to absolutely nothing all the way to a fully rekindled piece of armor. What I really like about what they've done is that once you have fully rekindled a piece of armor, you don't have to do it again for that slot. For example, this helmet has no kindling at all, meaning none of my candescent helmets do, but my arm slot is fully rekindled. That means every candescent gauntlet that I get already is fully rekindled and I do not have to waste any more kindling. To show you another example, this is my chest piece that has a small kindling in it. As you will notice, there's a small kindling here and a small kindling here because it's in the same slot. But if I upgrade this armor chest to a large kindling by slotting two kindlings into this, then all of my armor pieces in that slot, my chest slot, have a large kindling in them now. So fully rekindling all four slots, your helmet, your gauntlets, your chest piece, and your legs are your main priority. You have to play those things to get the kindling in order to take advantage of these high stat rolls. So I know what you're asking, Spencer, where does the ash come in? I'm glad you asked. So let's talk about just a second how to get that ash. You have to take those silver leaves into the bonfire bash event and turn those leaves into ash like I said before. The event is very straightforward. The EAZ is back. You have to run around the map with your fire team or a match made fire team, kill the mini bosses that actually drop orbs you take the orbs throw them into the bonfire in the center with a maximum of 20 orbs dunked before the final boss arrives now i have not played a single round of bonfire bash this season where i did not max out to 20 but just for reference it is five ash gained for every one dunk but most of the time, think of it this way, go into Bonfire Bash with 20 leaves in your inventory at least, and you will come out with 100 ash. So now that you have the ash, what do you do with it? So kindling, when you slot it into an armor piece, actually affects every single candescent armor in that slot. Ash is individual armor pieces. So for example, these candescent gauntlets have no ash in them at all. I am fully rekindled on my arm slot, but I have to individually put the ash into each individual piece. After the small kindling, you can put glowing embers in. After a large kindling, you can put shining embers in, which rolls that piece of armor with even higher stats, somewhere around the 60 to 64 range. And then on each individual piece of armor, you get to pick what spark you want to imbue into it 
in order to guarantee a plus 20 in that stat column. You are going to need a lot of ash to get all of the different combinations of armor that you are going to want. Hopefully that's simple enough to understand. Let me break it down one more time for you. There are three currencies. The first one you get from just doing things, right? It's the neutral currency, silver leaves. Just hoard as much of that as you can. You can hold up to 100 at a time. The two currencies that actually affect your armor are kindling upgrades the armor slot and ash actually upgrades the individual stats of the armor piece. Hopefully that makes sense. Now let's talk about exactly what you need to be doing when you're rolling these stats. This is a general guide. Understand that your individual use case and what you need for your guardian may be a little bit different because of the other armor that you have. But here is a little Destiny Armor 101. I'm actually gonna put a little bit more broad explanation of this in my beginner Destiny guide when that comes out, but let's get a little Armor 101 in. Essentially, Destiny Armor gets divided into two buckets when it comes to rolling stats. Legendary Armor in Destiny 2 has a maximum stat total of 68, and that's divided into two buckets. 34 within the top half and 34 within the bottom half. So mobility, resilience, and recovery add up to a total of 34 and discipline intellect and strength can add up to a total of 34 where this year's solstice is absolutely amazing for high stat roll armor is you can dictate two stats at the same time every time you focus a piece. Spencer, how do you do that? I'm glad you asked. So every time you roll a piece of armor during Solstice, you get to pick which spark you want to do. We said this a little bit earlier. Imbuing armor with a spark guarantees a minimum of 20 in its corresponding stat. So if you're looking to hit that 100 resilience build, you can guarantee you'll do that by imbuing the spark of resilience on all five armor pieces. Now that's not necessarily the most effective thing to do, but you can do that. But here is where it gets crazy. Not only can you dictate a single stat of plus 20, with your ghost mod, you can dictate a second stat of at least 10. Because in that third ghost slot, you can pick between any of the six stats to require that armor to give you at least a plus 10. For example, on these arms, I sparked resilience, which gave me an automatic plus 20 minimum to resilience, and I forced it to give me at least a plus 10 in recovery. And so when you look at the top half, it adds up to that total of 34 that I was talking about. Guaranteed 20 resilience, guaranteed at least 10 recovery, which forced my mobility into a plus two because I, you max out at 34. Now, if you do it that way, you are leaving your discipline, intellect, and strength up to complete chance, but that's the beauty of Solstice. You can just constantly keep rolling this armor until you get the exact layout and exact distribution that you need. So for example, if you're wanting to really rock out a resilience discipline build, then throw a discipline mod on your ghost and make sure you imbue your gauntlets with the spark of resilience. If you're really lacking in the recovery department and you need a better set of boots, then rock spark of recovery on your boots when you imbue them all the way and throw a different mod on your ghost in order to focus on things like strength, like I did here. This guaranteed me 20 recovery and guaranteed me 10 strength, but I just got lucky and it really threw a lot of that distribution into strength at a plus 21. There is a lot of luck and RNG involved still, but you have the most control that you've ever had over rolling your high stat armor. I'm telling you guys, do as many combinations as you can think of of your ghost mod and the sparks in order to get the most out of this solstice event before it goes away. So guys, with all of that being said, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments down below or drop by the live stream every Tuesday at reset, Wednesday night, or our weekend community help stream. Streams, I would be glad to answer those questions there or I'll answer them down in the comments below. Make sure you like the video if you learned something new. Subscribe to the channel for more Destiny content. See you in the next one. Bye!